Okay, for example, you want to purchase a car. The car is known. The price is two hundred thousand, or not car, uh, house two hundred thousand. And then you go to the bank, blah 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 blah, using any contracts, for example, ijara or musharaka or BBA and so on and so forth. But the total amount that you have to pay to the bank will be increased to four hundred thousand, two hundred thousand profit. So it's zul. Some people say, how come the bank will? Would the bank impose this kind of charges, this kind of profit, two hundred thousand? Is it accepted, acceptable? From Islamic point of view, there is one magazine. Magazine, okay? It's called Al Aslu Fil Ukur, Al Aslu Fil Ukur, Al Rida Bain Al Mutaqidain. The original rulings in every contracts, commercial contracts in Islam, is the consent of both parties. When both parties give their consent, so there is no more zul, there is no more coercion, there is no more uh, 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 yes coercion. You know coercion? The zul, meaning uh, forfeit. Eh? Forfeit. Yes, right. Because you have gave your consent, you have agreed with the price. You cannot say I agreed with the price, but I am not agreed. I am not agreeable. So, so how come? If you are not agreeable, don't come, don't sign, don't execute the contract. That simple. And then some people say, I have to because there is no more option out there. So you have to stick with the option. There is no choice because that is only the choice. If you go to the conventional market, the conventional market price is all the same. Actually, it's the same. Because they are using the same, almost the same formula and the same computer. All banking system in the world is almost using the same computer and the same calculator in calculating their profits. Okay, they have one price economy. In the economy, they have one price discipline. You know, one price. All right, yeah, uh, demand and supply. So why are you paying more than? Two hundred thousand because you are paying on different. It is accepted norms in this economy and Islamic law also accept that discipline and the principle that is when you pay by cash you can pay loan. When you pay by diff on different payment the price will be increased. That is accepted. For example, you go to IKEA. I don't know whether or not IKEA have this product. If you pay by cash. Five hundred. You pay by different in two months. Seven hundred. Is there anything here like that? If if yes, that's accepted. There's no riba. Why? Why there's no riba? It is time value of money. Correct. But from four madhab, I don't know what madhab, what school of thought you are uh, with, but in four madhab in Islam, the four biggest sects. And school of thought in Islam, Hanafi, Maliki, Shafi'i, Hanbali, all four accept this this concept. All four accept this concept, and it is not time value of money which is prohibited. There are two types of time value of money: time value of money where the underlying contracts is loan contract is prohibited, but time value of money where the underlying contracts are. The sale and purchase contract is accepted. So that's why this BBA thing is not okay, because that's a loan. Okay, there are some debatable issues. Then. Some people view that BBA is time value of money, time value of money. But time value of money, just like I mentioned just now, time value of money underlying contract. Not accepted, but time value of money where the underlying contracts buying and selling is accepted. BBA is buying and selling. Okay, so that's why scholars who uh, 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 propose and with the concept say that it is acceptable because it is selling, selling. All right. Okay, that's all about BBA because it's very difficult to 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 to, to discuss and uh, uh, BBA in a very lengthy discussion um, because we have other things and priority to to to, to cater, right? Okay, now 
we have understood that time value of money underlying contract by buying and selling is accepted. That's all. Now, what about the market price? Okay. So the market price of the that asset today is two hundred thousand. So why Islamic bank sell it for hundred thousand? That is beyond the market price. Is it accepted? So in order to know acceptable or not, you have to refer to the market price definition. So if you refer to the economists and also to the Islamists, to the Islamic law definition of market price, it's all the same. Market price is the last price agreeable by both seller, both seller and buyer. Okay. So meaning you yourself can determine market price. If you have, you are a big company, for example, Apple they launch Apple iPad two. You know iPad two, they will win. <laughs> they will launch already launched, but will be in the market in the US eleventh uh, of March, in the UK twenty fifth of March. Okay, who will determine the market price for iPad two? Apple, not Orange. <laughs> okay, the Apple because. They are the the product owner. Okay, product owner can determine the market price. For example, for example, you are the expert, the architect. For example, architect, very expert. You have twenty five years of experience in architecture, and then one company want to hire you as a consultant. Okay, and ask for your price for one month. For one month, for example, you have to be in their office for one month, nine to five. So, how much money you 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 will get? That is market price. So, who will determine? Maybe yourself, but you have to be wise. You have to seek other people's practice. Correct or not? For example, after seeking, after research, there is no such thing as consultant for one month, nine to five. You are the first one to be in the market like that. Consultant maybe for one contract, one job, one project, but not one month in the office. You are the first one to be appointed just like that package. So at that time, one time, you are the market center. You are the one. So you say, okay, I want fifty thousand crown. Accepted by the company? Oh, too expensive. What about twenty-five? Eh, twenty. Okay, you say twenty two. Okay, twenty two five. So from that day, twenty two will be the market price. So if anybody else out there have the same opportunity, they will have to refer to you. They will have to seek a research that is the market price. Okay, so that is market price. Market price the last price. So what about Islamic bank? Does not Islamic bank when they are selling twenty two hundred thousand more. And then you accept it, and not only you and the bank, but other bank also do the same thing. So that is the market price, right? Because that is the market price for deferred payment. So the market price for the cash is two hundred thousand, but deferred price for that asset is four hundred thousand. Is accepted. There is no nothing caution. There is no zone there. Okay. But Islamic Bank in Malaysia, they have a terrific, terrific, quite, quite interesting method in order to be competitive. Even though they have contracted with you that you have to repay, not repay, you have to pay the house for four hundred thousand, but they have the method of payment, monthly payment. How? Refer to BLR. You know BLR, base lending rate, interest rate. How come? People ask, "How come this is Islamic bank? How come you are referring something to interest rate?" Understood or not? The answer is that we are referring not to determine the price of the asset. The price of the asset is already accepted and agreed by both of us, four hundred thousand. But what we are referring to is we want to give you discount. That's all. How? Like this. Uh, 
Can we put it up? How? Oh, okay. Let me see. Uh, In Malaysia, the contracted rate, or just like we discussed just now, 400,000. You have to pay 400,000. And then this 400,000 is being reversed to get the rate. So maybe the rate is equivalent to 10%. Okay, That's how they do it. Because people already uh, uh, used to this kind of rate. So it's not wise for Islamic Bank to just slash this rate. We did we don't we don't uh, 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 deal with this kind of rate. We are just giving you this amount. So it's very difficult for peop uh, to the people. So that's that's how that's why Islamic Bank they also have rate, but this rate is reversed from this amount. So ten percent. So every month Islamic Bank will say to you, you have to pay. BLR or interest rate minus 2%. This is interest rate of the country. At this moment, interest rate BLR in Malaysia is 6.5. So, meaning how much? 4.5. Ah, 4.5. So, in our contract with Islamic Bank, we have to pay 10%. But, Islamic Bank give you discount. Every month, you only have to pay 4.5. No, every month. Every month, you have to pay BLR minus 2. Meaning, this month, 4.5. Meaning, the discount amount is four, uh, 10 minus... So much. 5.5% discount. That is Islamic Bank in Malaysia, you know. Quite very competitive. Yeah, very competitive. 5.5% discount. Okay? And then, if the interest rate BLR goes beyond 10%, for example, 12% or 14%, just like in 1997, uh, or 92. Okay. Islamic Bank cannot accept any amount more than 10%. Conventional bank, they will take more than 11 or 12 or 14. They will take all this 14. Right. So I just have a question about so linking the actual mortgage product or, or any, any product that you're selling to the conventional um, interest rate element. Is there any Islamic ruling on, on um, how to calculate, for example, um, time value of money, um, and sort of because most people would have some kind of objection um, in terms of linking a normal product, halal ethical product, to the interest, um, you know, the sort of conventional um, interest rate. I understand this. This one is one of the favorite questions by the public because mm -hmm. they say you are selling halal halal product you cannot link anything to the interest rate. Okay, in order to give answer, I just want to give you one analogy. For example, here in Sweden, it's very hard for us to find halal food. Okay, Say that you want to open one, one shop, sell meat, halal meat, halal chicken, and so on and so forth. You are the first one, for example. You are the first one. After open the shop, at the time you open the shop, you want to sell the chicken, the halal chicken, then the halal meat, one kilo for how many, how much? Can you refer the price of the non-halal meat beside your shop? 